I'm gonna show you how to pump the refrigerant back into the compressor. So we currently have our gauges here and we have the high side line, which is the red hose going to the liquid line, which is the small 3 8 copper line set. So we got that hose on and now we're gonna put the low side, the suction side hose on, which is the blue hose. And there's the low side gauge. So we have about 150 PSI inside the system currently. So now what we're gonna do, now we got the gauges on, we're gonna take our service wrench and we are gonna pump, or we're gonna close the liquid line service valve all the way. We're gonna seat that all the way down so liquid cannot go back to the compressor. So liquid cannot go back to the evaporator. All right, so now that we have the high side service valve closed all the way off. As you can see, it's seated all the way down. We can push the contactor in and the compressor will start and we will see on the gauges that the pressures will come down to zero. And when they get down to zero, we will turn the service suction port off with a crescent wrench. One thing I always do when we push the contactor in is I use an insulated screwdriver uh, so we do not get electrocuted. So I'm going to push that in. We will watch the gauges and the pressures come down. The suction port turned off liquid line is all the way seated and we have officially pumped the refrigerant back into the compressor because our gauges are at zero psi so Rob. that is how you pump down a system one thing before you pump down the system i did jumper in here this is a lennox system it says low dash ps that's right here these two i have that port jumper together so the low pressure switch will not turn the uh, system off when it gets down below 50 psi to keep it running so we can pump it all the way to zero so that is one thing you will want to do when you're pumping down your system to get it to zero psi